Uh, hello, I'm Efe and I'm a third year PhD student at Boston University and today I'm going to be giving a talk titled Towards Unsupervised NML Detection in HPC Facilities. So uh, with the growing scale and complexity of HPC systems, today the application's performance variation has been a significant bottleneck uh, in, in these HPC systems and it's been reported that there can be an eight times delay in the job's execution time, even that job is being run with the same input tech and with the same system. And those performance variations can cause premature job terminations, wasted computing power, and overall performance degradation. So to understand and quantify the impact of these performance variations, uh, we've conducted a survey with the code developers and HPC admins that work at the Sandia National Labs, and we asked them if they observe execution time variance between the same application input using the same system. And the most common answer that we see was that uh, people uh, face variation in the application's execution time of up to 10% mostly. And we also asked them whether they have any insight into the root cause of these performance issues that they affect their application. And the most uh, frequent answers was file system contention and network related problems. So uh, in order to uh, mitigate this performance variability, uh, the HPC admins have to investigate the monitoring data that they collect. However, this is, this is not a trivial task because the data that they collect is really high dimensional, noisy, and huge in size. That's why in our recent work, we use machine learning to detect whether a job that run on a certain compute node is healthy or anomalous uh, using a variational autoencoder model. And this work has been ex accepted to the supercomputing conference. And we show that our model achieved 0.95 and 0.88 F1 scores on our production HPC system called H Eclipse and a, a testbed cluster called Volta. So in this work, we want demonstrate the applicability of our work in the nurse systems. So before uh, describing experimental methodology, I wanted to like describe the data set that I worked with. So the data that I worked with is a, a telemetry data from 40 jobs from 2021. So this is an aggregate time series data, uh, which means that we have the performance metrics of each job, such as like we have the memory usage, CPU usage, IO and network usage, and we have mean, max, standard deviation values of all these metrics across the application run. And we also have some metadata for each submitted job, such as the job ID, user ID, the number of like nodes, computer architecture, application name, and start and end time of this job. So uh, quick looking, looking at the data. So jobs have been submitted into two different computer architectures, KNL and Housewell. And uh, in the KNL, the average number of CPUs requested has been more in the jobs that are submitted to the KNL. And when we take a look at the average execution time of jobs, KNL has like 3,400 seconds on average, and in Haswell, we have 2,300 uh, uh, seconds on the uh, average execution time of the applications. And when we take a look at the top five applications, we see VASP, LAMPS, Hydra, Espresso, and MOLPRO. So we also wanted to investigate the performance variation within users' jobs. So we first determined the top users in terms of the number of jobs that they submit to Cori. And we examined the variance in the execution time for the same application submitted by the same user. So this is the uh, data that has been like submitted by user X and the application is LAMPS here in this case. And what we see, what we plotted here is that we plotted the execution time variance for each uh, allocated and requested compute nodes and CPUs, and what we observe here is that uh, we've observed up, up to like more than 100% variation in the application's execution time, even the application has been uh, run with the uh, same uh, CPU, same number of CPU and same number of compute nodes. And as an experimental methodology, uh, we first like gather this data and data is of the form multivariate time series data. So we have used a couple of data processing techniques such as like data cleaning, filling out missing values, and uh, as a data scaling, we use a, a method called robust scaling. And we have experimented with three different unsupervised machine learning mo models. Uh, the first one is k-means clustering, the second one is isolation first, and the third one is variational autoencoder model, which I've described in our uh, previous work. And after that, we investigate the outlier jobs. So before throwing the data into clustering, we have to determine the optimal number of clusters. So to do that, we use the method called elbow technique. And based on this method, we've determined the optimal number of clusters as four. 
And on the right hand side, we have plotted the clusters in two dimensional space. So uh, to characterize the jobs in each cluster, we have also uh, defined several metrics. For instance, uh, we've defined a threshold based on the 75 percentile of several metrics. For instance, for memory metrics, we've picked mem uh, memory use mean and memory use max. And if a job in a certain cluster has higher value uh, than these like 75 percentile of uh, the whole data set, we consider this job as memory intensive. And to consider whether a job is IO intensive, we've taken a look at the read mean and write mean values. And similarly, for the network intensive, we've used the TX and RX values. And what we, what we observe here is that the first cluster, cluster zero, uh, exhibits the lowest rates of resource intensiveness across all these metrics. However, in the cluster index one, we've observed jobs which are like highly memory, IO, and network intensive. And when we uh, investigate the outliers from this clustering, we, uh, we have plotted the top five candidate outlier applications based on the results of this uh, outlier prediction. And we realized that the application labeled as IO benchmark has been the highest frequency, which, uh, which has been determined as outlier. And, as, and when we take a look at the outlier metrics of these jobs, we realized that uh, read mean, read max, and read standard deviation are the metrics that deviated most from the normal behavior which actually shows correlation between the IO benchmark application because those metrics are IO related metrics. And the second method is isolation forest. So uh, before, uh, again, like you throwing the data into this model, uh, we've set the contamination <laughs> ratio as 1%. So this ratio is actually the ratio of anomalies in the jobs that we predict. And in order to keep it realistic, we set the contamination ratio as 1%. Again, the isolation force labeled the outliers uh, runs and mostly for the IO benchmark application. And in the anomalous IO benchmark runs, we, uh, we observe like 4.97 4 times more read operations on average compared to the health runs, 1.85 times more write operations compared to the health runs, and 1.28 times more execution time on average compared to the healthy application runs. And finally, for the variation of the encoder model, uh, we split the data set into train and test with 70 to 30 percent ratio. And as a scaler, we use the max scaler. And to train the model, uh, we use only healthy samples. But uh, since we do not have any labeled data uh, to determine those healthy samples, uh, we use the isolation force models predictions as ground truth. And we also evaluate the model based on the isolation force predictions. And in this case, zero. It's the health label predictions, and one indicates the anomalous predictions. And our model achieved 0.70% micro average F1 score in this case. And here we see that the model's healthy predictions are highly correlated with the isolation force predictions. However, uh, there are some disagreements for the anomalous cases. And as a limitations and future work, so first of all, we didn't have any labeled data information regarding whether the application runs are healthy or anomalous. So we plan to collaborate with admins and application developers to obtain feedback regarding the health status of this application. And secondly, we didn't have any input tech information for the submitted jumps, which can also affect the execution time performance of the applications. And we've made all these experiments in the core jobs, and we also want to extend this analysis to Perlmutter in the future. And finally, uh, our Research group previously uh, developed a web-based animal diagnosis framework where we deploy our machine learning frame framework into Django backend. So the website is live right now. So we allow HPC users to upload their own telemetry data and they are capable of getting the animal diagnosis results based on our machine learning framework. And finally, we created a user survey to understand common performance variations that users face. So I would appreciate it if you guys can like spend two minutes uh, to fill out the form so you can scan the QR code and fill out the form. Thank you so much for listening to me. So maybe you don't have a way to tell them that's what you were saying, but is there a difference between like commercial or at least heavily community developed code and you know, smaller efforts in the inconsistencies? Does that make sense? Um, I currently don't have any information whether the code is commercial or whether it's used only for testing purposes. Is the 
goal of something like this to provide like real time monitoring? And if so, what what would be the natural extension? The job would get killed, or the user would get notified. What what might happen? Yeah, so uh, the goal is to actually like help the HPC admins to determine whether a job would be healthy or anomalous. Um, as a next step, like if you plan to like determine like certain performance metrics which resulted in this anomalous behavior, and this can also help users to like modify their codes as well. Quick question: The auto encoder, how many number of features do you consider in the input? So we use two thousand features. Uh, before feeding the variational tank order models. So is this telemetry something that would be easy for end user to add to their jobs so that you can get that information and then potentially provide feedback to us as the NERSC on where we're getting our jobs from? Yeah, so NERSC already uh, utilizes a monitoring framework right now, so like users doesn't have to specify anything. Those jobs are already collected by the system. Very well. <clears throat> I apologize. Yeah, we have the LDMS metric. And normal people get access to that data? Um, we are, I'm currently in contact with Kadidia, who is a data scientist that works. So maybe you can contact with her. So, so uh, Steve, we, we can make some of that data available. Part of, part of the problem with the LDMS infrastructure on the letter is Not ideally functional and supported by a vendor. So if the data is the data spot. But there, so there are some data sets um, for some period of time. That's fine. The, you're collecting data in our data spot in theory, right? So <laughs> <laughs> maybe between the two spots, we'll get some coverage. Who should I talk to? I think you can send me an email. Thank you so much. Great, thank you.